welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. I forgot the last thing I was going to say, and we're sort of, you know, going on and on. We could talk more and more about this, but Mike, you wanted to talk about a bright local survey of multi-location brands and SEO and the and SEO versus right. local so SEO. Released this week, uh, the Brand Beacon Report 2024, the secrets to multi-location marketing success from Bright Local. Bright Local always does a nice job with these types of industry broad uh, surveys that relate to local, and they did a nice job with this. It's a sample size of 200, and it's a little hard to, with, a, with that size, it, it's somewhat hard to abstract uh, a lot of meaning, but some of the uh, results. 200 multi location brands. Let's be clear it's 200 brands that they surveyed. 200 brands and with a uh, different size multi locations. They qualified them as local, regional, or national based on the number of stores. Uh, one point I would make is that one of the questions they asked, which relates to an earlier question topic here was which areas do multi-location marketers feel that generative AI can have the biggest impact and by a large margin uh, that was data analysis as opposed to content or other things um, content was 22 percent whereas data analysis was 36 percent across that so uh, they are using it uh, you know currently but it, uh, I, to me that's a rational response and a meaningful response um, so some of the highlights that I thought were interesting, one was how multi-location brands are managing local marketing activities. At Local U, we've always talked about, long before it was popular, a hybrid approach where headquarters and branches would share responsibility. 45% of these brands answered that that's how they were doing it. 32% were saying the task of local location marketing is managed centrally and 23% uh, said at a branch level, which I just thought was an interesting sort of stake in the ground. There was also an interesting sort of contrast between what brands are investing in and what's returning. For example, 51% are heavily investing in social media, 36% are heavily investing in paid, 36% in social. But when you look at what actually pays off, particularly amongst what they classified as high performing multi location brands, those that were that indicated they had exceeded expectations for last year, 81% uh, said social media was the uh, top performing tactic, but 69 cent percent said email were, was and 63% said video. So there's some sort of contradiction between what they say they're investing in and actually where they're getting performance and doing their work. Um, and when you look at what high performers are investing in, uh, social media is one, paid social is number two, but local SEO is number three, which was way down the thing in, in aggregate, but high performers were investing in local SEO. Um, and the other interesting sort of data point for me, which and then I'll turn it over to David because I know he had some interesting stuff to add, was the difference in what high performers versus average and low performers focused on. Um, for example, in revenue growth, average performers heavily focused on revenue growth. High performers were less focused on it as part of their marketing objectives. Whereas customer satisfaction, high performers were much more focused on customer satisfaction. Average performers were less so. Customer retention, similar. High performers were very focused on customer retention. Average performers, much less so. So I thought that was kind of intriguing that high performers focus on the customer, mm -hmm. whereas average performers focus on profit margins, revenue growth, and more um, traditional metrics. Um, and, um, and then when you also contradicting their investment, when you look at what they're actually using, Everybody's using social media, but also 70% or close to 70% are using both paid ads and email. Paid ads were noted as a low investment area, but they're actually using it at a high rate. So 
Anyway, Stephen, I know you had some stuff to contribute uh, in terms of what you said. Well, I just had one, you know, potentially particularly relevant for our audience, who's presumably mostly local search practitioners. Um, they, Bright Local sort of did a, a, a number of different sort of comparisons of high performers and average performers. And one question they asked was, or one sort of self-report that they asked their respondents to make is, do you have a team with a good or very good understanding of local SEO, understanding of local SEO? That's, that was basically 50% across both high performers and average performers. So like the, the level of local SEO expertise is, I would argue, pretty limited among both average and high performing brands. The, the sort of paradoxical result, and I think the one that really makes a lot of sense to me or as something to focus on in the local SEO industry, they asked, how do multi-location marketers rate their team's understanding of the difference between traditional and local SEO. And here, high performers were way out in front. Almost 50% said very good understanding of the difference between traditional and local, only 10% for average performers. And so to me, the, the opportunity is here, if we're gonna take this you know, sample size of 200, uh, I would say take it with a grain of salt, but it seems like there might be an opportunity to really, for, for anybody who's selling to these bigger brands, to level up the understanding of the differences between local and traditional SEO among average performers as a way into those brands. Um, it seems like the, the average performing brands like don't understand that there really is a difference, um, whereas the high performing brands do understand that difference. Their team just may not be very good at, at local search. So I think to me, there's a, there's a real sort of potential content wedge there to sort of get your foot in the door by explaining very clearly what the differences are and how your team addresses both traditional and local uh, factors and tactics and strategies. I, I haven't read the survey yet. I'm, I'm gonna do that right after we get off of this recording. Um, but one of the things that strikes me that doesn't sound like it's present in the survey is discussion of kind of brand brand marketing versus direct response and how that plays out in in these different contexts because i think a lot of you know we see consistently large enterprises small businesses and everybody in between social is the number one channel for everybody i mean that seems pretty consistent and i and i and i I'm, whenever i see that i'm always skeptical like is this really performing for you you know is this really doing the kind of performance that you think because they often rate it very highly and and i think that's a lot about brand for people because i don't yep. i just can't believe that it's driving that much direct response there's, maybe social media ads real, with offers in them do. yeah there's a real sort of conflict between you know the folks who are thinking about the bottom line as average performers and also investing in social media it's like what wait a second <laughs> Search and page should be your top two priorities if that's, you know, if that's really, if you're only concerned about profit margins and revenues. So. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm always struck by in these surveys, especially among small businesses, but it's sort of also true in, in larger organizations, that social, SEO sort of falls down, you know, sort of down in the middle. It's in the top tier maybe, or it's just below the top tier in terms of channels that people are focused on. And it, it seems to me that it really needs to be a top two channel for many reasons, but yet it's, it's I, and I can't explain that other than people don't understand it or it's too complicated for them or they don't see the results fast enough or something. But social media, so SEO has definitely lost in terms of mind share to social. And, you know, we've talked about that in the past, but it's strange. Which is good news for the companies who actually invest in it, right? If, if you know, your competition is right. sort of exiting the SEO game entirely, like, great, triple, now's the best time to double down and triple down on your SEO investments. So, right. Well, I mean, Airbnb is an interesting It's interesting to me that case. email has consistently performed, even though it isn't, even, they know it consistently performs, they appreciate its performance, but they don't invest in it, which is another irony of this, that email is along with SEO for me, one of the absolute all-time winners of both brand and driving transactions. Yep. But in the future, all your email, uh, all the email <laughs> marketing will be written by AI. 
So we'll see. And potentially we'll see grab a higher response rate. That's right. That's right. Be humans prefer AI written content, yeah. as we know, as we now know. Yeah. Well, so, um, unless anybody may be responded to by AI as well. Yes. Unless uh, any final thoughts exist, um, we'll bring this episode 145 to a close. A lot of just more stuff to talk about than we have time for. And so we'll defer certain things to next week. But uh, everything is getting very interesting. So with that, we bring we live another in interesting exciting times. Episode. Yes, may you may you live in inter interesting times. And we certainly do. So all right, we will see everybody next week in the interim. Tell your friends, have a good week. And until next time. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.